Welcome to another Jerry Anderson themed countdown video. I'm your guest host, Mark Simpson Wedge, and in this video, I'll be counting down the top 10 guest vehicles from Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons. For this list, we'll be looking at vehicles that make only one or two appearances in the show, but play a vital role in the episodes. Before we begin, I should point out that we're only looking at vehicles that are not from the Spectrum organization. So things like the radar van, the Magnacopter, and the hovercraft won't count. Number 10. Seneca Helicopter, Expo 2068. The Seneca Construction Company used these unmanned remote controlled Chinooks to carry building equipment and materials for their construction purposes. All this equipment is stored inside the wooden crates. When the Mistrons threaten to destroy the Atlantic seaboard of North America, one of the controllers, threatened by Captain Black, programs a helicopter to rendezvous with a Mistron agent to pick up a nuclear reactor, which is starting to overheat. Thanks to a witness that was wounded by the agent, Spectrum were able to find the helicopter carrying the reactor, so that Captain Scarlet could get aboard and shut it down. But this wasn't going to be easy, because Black had shot both the controller and the console, causing the helicopter to go out of control and collide with anything it comes across. Despite crashing into a structure, Scarlet was able to shut down the reactor, preventing a nuclear explosion. Number 9. World Air Force V-17 Bomber, Flight to Atlantica. A modified version of the RTL-2 transporter, this aircraft is capable of dropping two high explosive bombs at zero feet and has a maximum range of 8,400 miles. When the Air Force were due to dispose of a shipwreck using a V-17, Spectrum take over the operation due to the Mistrons threatening to destroy Atlantica, a World Navy underwater complex. However, due to drugged champagne and Captain Black swapping the maps around, Captains Blue and Oka drop one of the bombs on Atlantica's defense control tower. With the frontline defenses blown out of the waters in one strike, the undersea complex was doomed. Fortunately, Colonel White and Captain Scarlet were able to stop them before they reached the target. And don't worry, the V-17 has ejector seats, so Blue and Oka were able to escape in time. Number 8. The Moon Tractor, Crater 101. A personal favourite of mine, this small yellow tracked vehicle was used during the early years of lunar colonisation. The turret fires demolition missiles, capable of destroying even the toughest rocks. Captain Scarlet, Captain Blue and Lieutenant Green use one of these tractors on their mission to destroy the Mistron complex on the far side of the moon. Despite getting stuck in a trench, they were able to knock out the control vehicle and the Mistron drones, and Scarlet was able to use the tractor to escape the destruction of the complex. Fast, manoeuvrable and capable of overcoming all terrains, the Moon Tractor has also been used on Earth. This makes it one of the most versatile ground vehicles in the Jerry Anderson world. Number 7. Flight 104, Flight 104. This passenger aircraft is part of the European International Airways for all commercial flights in Europe. It has a top speed of 550 miles per hour and can reach heights more than 35,000 feet. Spectrum used Flight 104 as a safe way to escort Dr. Conrad, the world's leading astrophysicist, to Geneva in Switzerland, where he'd be taking place at a conference with the world president. But at the starting point, Novena Airport, Captain Black had locked the crew in a storeroom, allowing the Mistrons to take over the aircraft so they can crash it into the Alps. When the Spectrum Angels warn Captain Scarlet and Blue using red smoke, the two Spectrum officers shoot their way into the cabin and take over the controls. Luckily, the plane overflies an electric power station, and the high voltage causes the Mistron's influence to disperse. Despite having to make an emergency landing at Geneva Airport due to an undercarriage malfunction, Spectrum's job to protect Dr. Conrad was a success. Although combining his air sickness and the ordeal he went through, I doubt he'll want to go flying again for a while. Number 6. The Unitron, 0.783. Like the Seneca helicopters, this is an unmanned remote control vehicle. 
built by the World Army to operate in potential conflict zones, it's armed with a highly articulated turret, a flamethrower, and two machine guns. Although the Unitron is programmed to seek and destroy only buildings and vehicles, the Mistron agent, Colonel Storm, was able to reprogram the computer so that the Unitron would attack him and at the same time kill the Supreme Commander of Earth forces. It was only after Captain Scarlet evacuated the Supreme Commander and Colonel Storm in an SPV that everyone realised that Storm was the Unitron's target and not .783. Despite getting shot by Storm, Scarlet was able to eject himself and the Supreme Commander to safety, leaving the SPV and the Unitron to go flying off the edge of a cliff. Amazingly, the SPV survives the fall, though I doubt that Storm did. As for the Unitron, well, not so lucky. Back to the drawing board. Number 5. Frostline Maintenance Truck, Avalanche If you ever go to the Snowy Mountains in Canada, you will find several military bases belonging to the Frostline Outer Space Defence System. Because the bases are spread out, you would need one of these trucks, or snowcats, whichever you like to call them, to get to them. The tank on the back of these trucks contains liquid oxygen, which is used for making the rocket fuel for the nuclear missiles. When the Mistrons announce that they intend to knock out some of the key bases, they cause one of the maintenance trucks to crash and reconstruct it, along with its driver, Eddie. Once inside a Frostline base, Eddie puts the Mistrons' plan into action by placing an oxygen depletion device into the ventilation system causing the personnel on the base to suffocate. After discovering this technique, and Destiny Angel finding the wreckage of the original maintenance truck, Captain Scarlet chases after it in an SPV, but the Mistron agent dumps some of the liquid oxygen onto the road, causing the SPV to spin out of control and crash. Scarlet survives and uses his gun to cause an avalanche, hence the name of the title. This avalanche collides with the maintenance truck, putting an end to the Mistron's threat. Number 4. SKR-4 Inferno Built by the Eurospace Agency, the SKR-4 is a space recovery vehicle, capable of travelling up to 20,000 miles per hour. The front of the ship contains explosive charges, which are used for destroying space junk in Earth orbit. During an assignment, the Mistrons destroy the space vehicle by slamming a meteorite right into the side of it. With the SKR-4 in their hands, they send it back to Earth and use it as a missile to destroy an irrigation plant in South America known as the Nahama Complex. But instead of crashing into the complex itself, Captain Black conceals a homing device inside a statue in an old Aztec temple. This device transmits radio impulses, which jam the SKR-4's original re-entry waveband. Despite Spectrum's attempt to destroy the homing device, which meant destroying the whole temple, they were unable to change the SKR-4's flight path, and the space vehicle crashes into the ruins of the temple. Combined with the explosive pack on board, the blast triggers a landslide, which falls into the valley and destroys the complex. This does lead to many viewers asking the question, why didn't the Angels just shoot the SKR-4 out of the sky? Number 3. Delta Tango 19er Winged Assassin Built by the New World Aircraft Corporation, this is one of the largest commercial passenger jets ever built. A top speed of 1500 miles per hour, it can carry up to 500 passengers, and it has a cargo bay so it can hold up to 8 vehicles. Like the SKR-4, this is another vehicle that brings a victory to the Mistrons. With their intentions of assassinating the Director General of the United Asian Republic, the Mistrons use their powers to cause a malfunction on DT-19, causing it to crash into the Atlantic, killing all aboard. They send the reconstructed DT-19 to London International Airport, where they intend to use it as a battering ram to slam into the Director General's private jet. Using the SPV, Captain Scarlet rams the wheels of the giant aircraft, hoping that it will lose its balance and crash. Although he succeeds, it wasn't enough. The size of DT-19 makes it impossible for the private jet to avoid collision, 
and the Mistron succeed in killing the Director General. Number 2. The Trailer Trucks, Big Ben Strikes Again and Expo 2068. Although the driver cabins are a completely different design, both trucks are very similar and they proved they were worthy enough to come back for Joe 90 and the Secret Service. The one in Expo 2068 was the one carrying the reactor which was taken away by the Seneca helicopter. But the one from Big Ben Strikes Again is probably the most popular truck from the show. Transporting a nuclear device to an underground construction site, the Mistrons hijack the truck and take it to a car park. There, they plan to use the nuclear device to destroy the City of London. The only clue Spectrum have to finding the truck is the driver, Macy, who says he heard Big Ben strike 13. After Captain Blue figures it out, he and Scarlet find the truck and take it to the construction site out of town. It's never explained what is being constructed, nor it explains why a construction site would need a nuclear bomb in the first place. But who cares, the important thing is that London was saved. Before I reveal the number one pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Number one. The Moonmobile, Lunaville 7 and Crater 101. The primary transportation vehicle on the lunar surface. Instead of hovering along like a hovercar, the Moonmobile uses the low gravity conditions on the moon to make short energy saving hops, almost like a grasshopper. There are two versions of the Moonmobile. The one in Lunaville 7 is the standard version. Captain Scarlet, Captain Blue and Lieutenant Green use it to explore the Humboldt Sea on the far side of the moon. The one from Crater 101 is the cargo version. This one has a cargo bay which can carry a small vehicle, i.e. the moon tractor. Although we don't see the moon tractor being deployed from the moonmobile, there are technical manuals that explain how it's done. Because of its unique design, the Moonmobile makes a return in the live-action series UFO. Although it has a different shape design and it hovers instead of hopping, it's still one of the most iconic lunar transport vehicles in the Jerry Anderson world. Do you agree with this list? What is your favourite guest vehicle from Captain Scarlet? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications, and we'll see you in the next video. SIG.